what made me join the regular army was they shipped me to California after my uh, 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 camp there in Fort Hood, Texas, and I didn't want to go to the Pacific. So when I got there, they didn't know whether I was going to go to the Pacific or the Aleutian Islands, and they issued me hot weather equipment in one big bag, and another was was uh, cold weather for going to the Aleutian Islands and stuff. So I didn't want to go either way, so I re-enlisted. <laughs> and they told me, well, if you do that, your chances are you'll be sent to Europe. So uh, I said, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were on a troop ship. And one of the interesting things we were doing, we come into the English Channel and we were going to uh, unload the unit, not the unit, but the replacements were on this ship. And uh, we came into uh, St. Louis and uh, just before we got there, it was everybody was up on deck and these different uh, assignments of what hole you were in the ship and stuff. And uh, we were up there all lined up with our barracks bags and everything. And this uh, Navy uh, patrol boat was, was blinking light at our ship, you know. We didn't know what was going on. And uh, so we kept watching this ship, you know, and it was really moving pretty fast. And uh, the ship we was on was stopped and dropped anchor. We were almost ready to go into the dock. Uh, Harry we was still about a, maybe a mile or so from the, and I thought, well, somebody said, well, maybe they're going to put a pilot person on here to take us into where one of these floating docks is. So anyway, these guys were standing on this patrol boat with rifles and stuff, you know, and they were shooting at something in the water. Finally, the captain said, uh, brace yourself, I got to make a hard left right here. And I mean, he did a hard left, turned around and we went back and, and uh, he said, uh, there's a mine floating there and they're trying to explode it. Oh my God. And it was one of these sunken mines that attracted by metal and stuff, you know. Oh, wow. So uh, anyway, they finally detonated that thing with a rifle fire and we were quite a ways from it. Boy, you could feel that blast from where we were, you know. Yeah. And uh, so then he said, well, we're going to uh, sit here a while and they're going to check the rest of this harbor out. And it was a military harbor they'd built after VE Day. And uh, it was kind of foggy that morning. And uh, I remember when the fog lifted, it seemed like we were just like, a block away from the shore, and all these houses were higher up on the dealer, all gutted from artillery fire, naval fire, and everything. That was my first experience of seeing the devastation of uh, war. They roused us out of bed there about, uh, oh, it was about 1.30 or something in the morning raining and snowing, this was around the 1st of January. And uh, so they marched us down to this uh, loading area and we all climbed these trucks and they took us down there to this little village. I never knew what the name of it was, but there was a uh, train there that had uh, what we call box cars here, but they call them 40 and 8 cars there. They're just old. World War One looking boxcars. And uh, I said, well, okay, you guys, uh, we're gonna start up here and you wait till we call you out of your vehicle and we'll tell you what boxcar to get in. Well, it, we started out, uh, we were about halfway down the, the deal by the time and it was raining and snowing. And so we unloaded there and we had mud up of our ankles and all we had. We didn't have any overshoes or nothing like that, just a regular boot. 
we so put it through and they put us on that box car and finally got it loaded up. And uh, so we uh, took out and uh, left there and didn't tell us where we were going. As all they said, well, we're going into Germany. And uh, so anyway, we combined this one guy. See, there's a door, this big door on either side of this box car. And uh, he said, hey, you guys, we're coming by the City of Light. This guy, he says, well, what City of Light? We didn't know what it was. So that's Paris. Boy, everybody come over there and we could see the light of City of Paris, you know. And so, well, maybe we're going to detrain there. Yeah. No, we didn't. He said, you guys are still going to the east, you know. So we kept on that train. And uh, uh, we, was, we never got dried. Oh, yeah, we were. Uh, oh, yeah. See, in our barracks bags, we're all put up in the front of this baggage deal up in this train. You know, there wasn't any passenger cars or nothing. It was strictly a freight train deal. And uh, so every once in a while, they'd come to some place where there was a track they could get us off on. And uh, so we said, God damn, if we get some wood or something, we could build a fire. And we'd, so we jumped off the train and stuff, you know, and there's these little houses along the railroad track near these towns, and we ripped off the tail of the fence off in some of these places and got wood on it, and then we found a big old iron lid about this big come off a barrel or something. We threw that in there, and then we built this fire on that thing on one end of the deal and shut one of the doors, keep the other open so we get some heat. Uh, took a chill off, and that was about it. Right. But uh, we got that tin thing so hot that uh, it burnt through these little thin planks on this boxcar and had uh, chilled it down. And uh, one of them said, boys, we better get rid of this thing, because if that thing catches on fire underneath this thing, we're going to have to jump out this train. So anyway, we grabbed that thing and the guy slid it over there with the thing still burning and it flew off and it was going down the track ahead of us about as fast as the train was. Just take it off and all these sparks were flying up, you know. <laughs> so we had to tough it out that way till we got to a place called uh, uh, So where did you, where did the train take you? To the, a youth camp, it used to be a German youth camp. So you're saying that there were like still SS guys out there that hadn't been caught? Oh, yeah. Like SSC. S okay. Yeah. And so the regular Wormach soldiers didn't have any problem with them. Yeah. But later on, we run into people. Uh, uh, our unit was changed from the 35th Tank Battalion, 4th Armored, to the 35th Constabulary Squadron. Third Army, okay. and uh, it was, he said, uh, you guys now, he said, the war is over with, we have to win the peace now, right. and that, that was what, so then, well, we still had some factors of people that don't think the war is over yet, and he said, that's going to be your job, so we started training for that.